Greetings, God of Gold here, back for another video. Uh, this is a tutorial video. Today, um, I'm going to talk about portrait making a little bit on how, what style I use. Um, before my last tutorial videos that I was making, I kept making uh, stuff about coding. Uh, I did make a GFX one for like icons and stuff, basic tutorial, but I did hope that those helped out in some way shape or form to inspire new modders for the community um anyways today i'm going to discuss about portrait making now this is very crucial if you want your leader obviously to show up because if you don't have the portrait or maybe if it's not as good uh, it may affect the presentation overall so this isn't a coding thing like this is not like a core gaming issue necessarily it's more of like a trying to I don't want to say it's a cosmetic either it's it's one of those fine lines between the two it's it's important but it's not like you can not have a leader portrait if you don't want to but it is usually recommended that you do have a portrait uh, so to follow a basic formula of making a portrait as you can see here i have alexander the third with me which is nicholas's dad he's the i guess you could say the second to last Tsar of russia um what he did was basic overview of his history he was known as basically the peacemaker or peacekeeper of russia because he barely like pushed his country into war he was trying to restore the country's influence but he was also a very reactionary person meaning he opposed democratic change in any way shape or form uh, but enough of that hope that gave you a basic history so uh how to make a portrait well here's what you do whenever you establish a portrait for uh, a leader you always start off with like black and white for example this one I already did it's in color but if I you know had to do it again like uh, for example also I forgot to mention this video I'm gonna be using as a model to help out in this process so please excuse if I skip around from Photoshop to here because it has accurate measurements and I want to make sure it works. Uh, okay. So, Alexander the Third. Uh, trying to remember which portrait I exactly used because it was somewhat like this, not not necessarily like this one. Uh, I don't know if it was that one either. But basically, what you do is, uh, I'm not going to demonstrate it here because, you know, I really can't really record on my phone. Not to mention, you know, I don't want to expose my phone, you know, privacy reasons. But basically, you get an app called, uh, no, you get two apps. You get Face App down here, and then you get the Remini app. The Remini app clears up the portrait makes it look better like uh, the facial features and stuff but keep in mind though uh depending on how you use this you can't overdo it because if you overdo it if you look closely at the beard you can see those little white indents try not to uh you know over clean it up like don't clear too much because that'll really screw it up but it's easy to avoid you just gotta really watch your measurements carefully um, so what you do is uh, I think like say how about this well, we could just use this for example say I black and white this right now black and whiting a picture uh, that's usually required when it comes to making a portrait like even if it is already black and white, you should still select it anyway because it purifies the entire color and aligns it up properly instead of having random indents of uh, shading and stuff. Now, 
because this is a basic tutorial, uh, I will try to keep out like you know tedious parts like coloring each and every piece. But it basically it's up to you to decide of what color it is as long as it's like uh, say if you try to do an accurate person like this one. Uh, I would assume he had like blue eyes. So what you do is you can make layers. Uh, also, as mentioned in this video tutorial, you can even uh, use paint.net, but I prefer using Photoshop along with it to help me out for like background shadows and stuff and layers, which is very helpful, might I add. Um, so because that the portrait's in black and white, uh, let's say, let's try to export it. So let's just do BW for black and white. Now then you can get out of this. Now I wouldn't X out of this because it, you know, it takes long for me to load it. Uh, grab this. Delete. Uh, okay. So what happens next is you you open this in paint.net. First off, yes, I still use paint.net, but I would also use Photoshop for like the layers and stuff for more accurate uh, backdrop shadows and realistic um, proportions settings here. Again, it kind of it's up to you basically of how you make the portrait, but. Um, this is just my idea of how, like a basic rough idea of how I do it. Now, because this character is in black and white, there's some things that need to be done. For example, face app right there, that's an automatic portrait killer. So because he's wearing black, you could just color it out. It's not even noticeable. Now, yeah, you're probably thinking, you know, is that all you do? Well, not all of the portraits are like they have this type of thing. Sometimes they can wear brown, sometimes they can wear yellow, they can wear gray, green. It all depends on where you get your source. So, yeah, that's how it works. Um, so, once you have that set up, then you can begin uh, to do basic color overview. Like you could do, like here, for example, I'm going to save this very quickly. All right, so black and white, uh, where is it? There it is. So it's saved here. Uh, the If you look close enough, the face app situation is gone. So that's good. You don't want, you know, watermarks or type of labels because that'll really kill it as i previously mentioned all right so this is when we start to get into the tutorial of skin overlay so yes we're beginning to color now before you do anything you need a few basic things now again depending on what portrait you get because it always falls back on where you first get the portrait uh, but this is usually required so first thing drop the brightness to well hardness sorry to zero then what the hardness will do is it'll make it like a soft softer brush don't worry that's not the color it's just an example of what it should kind of resemble that's the shape of the coloring the next thing you should do is usually you should edit like contrast and brightness so like for example say if you have a character that's really really bald not like this one but like sometimes it may have like a funny chrome dome effect <laughs> it would shine basically right on like the view and it just wouldn't look as good so what you do you can edit the brightness but not too much though because if you edit it it's really not going to come out well it mainly depends on you like, uh, don't do this either. That's That'll really wreck the portrait. Uh, but if you do this, you could really, like, 
there's a certain balance for each category you do but for the sake of this uh that's just a mentioning just to point out you know keep that in mind whenever you make portraits always watch for brightness and contrast but personally for this tutorial since i pre-made it and since i'm giving you a pre like overview of what i did i don't need it at least you know again if you want to use it be my guest just be mindful of what you do um so the skin for the portrait now i already i can skip the cutout part over here on the tutorial uh, this is a very resourceful tool and yes I do know how to do this it's just I, I like to have references I don't like to go you know on scavenger hunts just to find one thing so here's a basic skin color now I don't know what skin color your portrait could have uh, whatever you do like whatever say if it's like a darker one I would assume obviously you would need a darker shade but uh, just keep that in mind, you know, whenever you make a portrait accurate to that person, you always have to watch for color schemes. Now what you do, you do 139, 105, 90. This will give it that type of color. This is like a tan, but I'll show you in a sec. So what you do is, I'm gonna make two, no, three layers. And I'm going to do skin, skin two, and skin three. Now, also, make sure you have all three of these set to overlay. And the original background is normal. Okay, so whenever you make a portrait, overlay, 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 overlay. Cannot express that enough. So once you have the overlay setting, uh, as this video just mentioned, set the hardness of the brush to zero. You could also diffuse different colors. You could do, uh, yep, add a layer. Just did that, set it to overlay. So I basically followed this type of path of what I did. And then after that, you could just do stuff like this, as you just saw. Now. The reason why I'm making a tutorial, and since I'm already using another tutorial as a model, is because this is a variant of the TNO style of how Hoi 4 portraits look. So I do things a little differently. Um, if you do things differently, I, I don't hate it. Uh, you can do whatever you want. I respect that. Um, make sure you get all the skin area, including the ears, the mouth. Then, if you're like this guy, he's got a big beard. So what you gotta do, you gotta go around. But don't go on the nose and stuff, because that'll trash the other parts of the portrait. Make sure it lines up with the edges. Don't cross over too far otherwise that's really going to overlap the paint and that's usually not a desirable feature you, you always got to watch out make sure what you do um <coughs> excuse me uh another thing i have to point out uh whatever you do coloring like this and whatever you just saw me erase you always have to erase the area with the, um, what was it? Like the hair, like the eyebrow, the sideburns, and like this guy, he's got a beard. So obviously you would need to go around. Now this is a little more tedious, but I'm just showing it just to have you understand what goes on. You know, it's proper honesty. I wouldn't lie to you. Uh, so once you have his stuff, like his hair colored out from the paint, then what you can do is you can color, well not color, but erase the eye, the inner eye area, because that's not the color of skin. It uses like a white, pinkish, uh, reddish 
healthy type of color. Um, but you can do white too. It's up to you. Again, everything is strictly up to you. So whatever you do, you do. Which is fine. Uh, I'm just showing you how I do it. So fast forward a bit. Um, I follow, again, pretty much the same way this tutorial works. So once you color in the face area, uh, yes, that's the other thing. You have to smooth the hair transition. Like uh, this guy in the portrait, the hair is kind of welded or blended. So sometimes you got to do that as well to give it much more character. Um, but thankfully, I don't have to do it here as much because it's more tamed uh, with the other areas. Uh, all right. So next, uh, you do some color adjustments. Like uh, you can add stuff in. Uh, when I follow this tutorial, for example, like you do some color variations. Like uh, like I just mentioned, like skin two, skin three. So the five o'clock shadow, uh, you, okay, you have the skin color here. So you could go 40, you could go 43. Usually I would do 40, uh, but since I'm trying to ensure, you know, the quality's there, sometimes you may have to go a little higher because of the lighting issue. That's the thing though, whatever portrait you get, adapt to it. So that this way it's much easier to manage and therefore you can get that type of realistic tone to it. I know I sound like I'm rambling too much, but it's it's really uh, it's really how it works. It's not in any way uh, what you would think. So once you have the color, you do some variation, lower the opacity, 43, 40, depending on whatever you use. Then you go to skin two, and then you just do this. Now, depending on what you do, I usually just, you know, get rid of the beard section because it's not, you know, you have to avoid color overlap because that'll trash it. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Since there was, wasn't a lot, you know, like this guy, he doesn't have a beard. This guy has a beard, so you don't have to do as much. Uh, but the third layer is where things get you know strange because that's when you have to go from here and basically make like an m like you go from this side this temple of the head go down the cheek up the nose slope down the nose slope and then go to the other temple that's how it works but it's so lightly done that uh let's see uh decrease Oh yeah, this is the lips, so, uh, where was I? So, you would, you would always have to make sure the skin piece is there. Like, uh, you got this color, you got that color. Uh, preferably, you would go back to the first layer, which is the original base of the skin. Then you would edit, uh, as the tutorial literally just mentioned, uh, you basically edit uh, by like four or five. Um, let me full screen this so I can get a better look here. Yeah, so see how it's 105. You just drop that down to 100. And then, uh, yeah, you could just basically color that in. Uh I guess I could put it in skin too because it's not really gonna. Oh, unless it does that. Uh, sometimes you may have to make another layer. So I guess I can make like a fourth skin for like another thing. That's the thing though. The more skin layer you add to a portrait, the higher quality it's gonna be. Because it concentrates on that particular area and doesn't jump around so much. Uh, let's see. Oh, now here's the other kicker. Sometimes you may get this like weird reddish color. No, we don't want to do that. So what I do is I lower the opacity. 
sometimes halfway, sometimes more, depending on how it goes. And yeah, you could do something like that, which looks sort of natural, but it's kind of it's a little too red. Let me drop that down. Uh, other times, you can actually just drop like the uh, this V down here, which is like the the brightness of the color, sort of. Uh, so you can do this, and that kind of gives it. Oh, sorry. No, like that. So you could do that color. You could do uh, maybe if you want to go like a little more, that's fine too. So like preferably try um, try a hundred with the opacity. I guess that's the best I can make it for the moment, but that's usually how something like that would work. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So, once, okay, so here's what you do. You have the lip color. It has a slight tint of red in it. So what you do, you go to the fourth layer of skin, like I just added. Again, different layers for different portraits. It's up to you. So don't worry about it. If your portrait is different, this is just like a basic type of ideal concept of what it would look like. In my style, at least. Uh, so on the fourth layer, you have the same thing. Then you drop the opacity, I'd say, around 40, 40-ish. 40 like 40-ish, 43. Depends on what you use. Then what you do is you increase the spread of the paint so that it does this. I don't know if you could see it but basically it gives it that red tint. Once the red tint is installed, the portrait looks a little more natural. Uh, sometimes you gotta, like, for example, right now I kind of messed up. Basically, I don't know if you can tell. Um, so you go here. I'm gonna retake that color piece. So I'm gonna use 40... Uh, three. Then go to the fourth layer again. Uh, sometimes you may have to increase it a little bit, but be careful. You don't want to add too much. Again, depends on the brightness. Okay, so that's a little better. I don't know if you could see the red, but um, but it's basically it's there. Once that's the other thing I forgot to point out. The more you do this, the more used to the color differentiation you see. Um, so, as you saw there, it's now looking realistic. More realistic than before. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, that's the other thing, too. Sometimes you can even do it again. Like, you could, like if you want extra assurance, like you could just do another coating, which is also very helpful but usually I wouldn't have to use like I wouldn't do it unless if I have to but if you do have to be my guest I'm not here to judge all right so I color well I forgot to mention in this tutorial he doesn't do the sclera which is like the white uh, area of the eyes so I like to do them personally because it adds more character to the person and I can just you know, get rid of the iris and pupil part from it. Kind of like how you did with the skin, except on a smaller scale. Excuse me. On a smaller scale. So, what I like to do for the uh, sclera, I have a skin code. And this is these are all custom skin codes, uh, by the way. This one, uh, this is the sclera color. This one follows the uh, 153 areas, but it could be different in paint.net depending on how you use it. So like I could do this, but it may come up gray. So I'm thinking, uh, put like a slight, a very, very slight, 
tint of red. Not too much, because if you do, it's not going to look natural. It's going to look really... Uh, but you don't want it white either, if you're like me. Uh, I would put the opacity maybe halfway, just to balance it out. And then you just color it. Now, it does look a little more pinkish, but that is actually how a natural sclera is supposed to look. Uh, if you see it differently, that's no problem. Sometimes that can happen. But that's how I usually do it. Um, crap, I accidentally put it in the... That's okay. I guess... Maybe. Actually, you know what I could do? Select this. Then... Revert that. Oh, that's the other thing. You have to remember, because I kind of screwed up. I'm very sorry about that. So you go uh, all overlays. So I make four new layers. Now, it looks like a lot of layers. Now, don't get me wrong. It looks daunting. But what you do is there's four things I like to do. So you got the sclera. You got the iris. You got the pupil. And you got the glint, which is like the white part right here. It's like the reflection, the light reflection going off it. So, uh, oh, that's not good. All right. All right, so we're not going to try that. I'm going to try that again. So you got the same colors. Uh, might need a little more red. And there you go. See? Now, once you're done with that, because I did it pretty quickly, uh, just to, you know, because I kind of screwed up. And sorry if I stumble a lot. It's just, it's really... <sighs> Making a tutorial is not as easy as it sounds. Um, all right, so once you're done with the sclera, you move on to the iris. Now, I have a basic eye color of blue stored in Photoshop. Again, I like to have Photoshop to help me out. So you have 102, 153, and 153 again. So you can do that. Uh, now, you have different eye colors. Uh, I would recommend looking some up, maybe like a more natural version, just to see how it would work. Uh, here no that's too teal that's the other thing I always try to avoid using teal too much teal doesn't make it presentable uh, no it's too much so you want to go for like um, I guess a, a strange type of blue it's like a, uh, hold on a sec so I'm going to snip this. This is very quick. You don't have to follow this stuff. Uh, sorry if I made some of the people watching this nervous. It's just trying to get the sample. Of the... Uh, excuse me one second. So get this color here. You snip it. Then you copy. Then you put it here. Uh, no, no. So I can get a proper view of color. So kind of like that. Like uh, 107, 130, 156. Uh, again, I apologize if I startled some with the with the going backtracking because it's it's really you got to take your time with this because if you don't the portrait's going to get messed up so then you gently color it in if it goes too far on the glint just push it back a bit there you go now you don't have to do the pupil if you don't want to so long you don't color over it personally i like to do it because it gives again you know, 
it gives it that appearance like it's a sharper appearance rather than a dull one uh, the glint very easy just grab this like a very light transparent white like 128 opacity about halfway and you go two you just go boop 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 and then that's it those are the eyes now uh now the hair is oh i forgot to put that in the other layer actually hold on one second uh pupils okay so then once you put it there you could go boop 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 and then that's it you're done with the eye layers uh, let's see if I can try to merge these. Yes, I can. Sometimes, also, fair warning, whenever you merge layers, you always have to watch out because sometimes the color can get screwed up. But as you can see, voila. Realistic schemes here. Now, uh, I think to save the trouble uh i might do uniform maybe in another video but for right now i think the last piece of this tutorial is the hair now you can do a brown like uh you could do because i think he had like a darkish brownish type of thing going on so i would highly recommend for this portrait or any portrait similar to him you should do uh one or two 51 but don't make it like all the way brown like that you should do you should darken it a bit lower the saturation just a touch and i would probably do midway opacity we'll see how that goes ah see there it is so you could do that. Um, this basically uh, it gives the portrait a more normal human color, rather than having to rely so much on um, you just using black. Because whenever you use black. Oh, well, that's the other thing too. Even in dark areas like this, you got to do it because it's it'll goes back to screwing it up and really don't want that to happen sometimes you may get a little overlay that's fine depending on how you you know how you use it but uh if you really want to avoid it probably try just doing this and you can i don't know i guess you can leave it like that it's up to you I'm just showing an example, so I'm sorry if this is not like the best present presentation you saw. It's just to give a rough idea of how it works, at least my perspective. So that's basically how you do the hair. Uh, you don't really have to do this unless if it's thicker. Again, the balding situation. Uh, also, if you have any other uh, colors trying to escape you can do that but watch out don't go too far in otherwise you'll erase it and that's pretty much how you do like the biological facial features uh i hope this helped um i'll do probably uniform in the next video so stay tuned for part two and i'll see you there bye